Hey! <laughs> yes. And he just goes, you! This is really good storytelling in a fight. Like it's very much beat by beat, here's what's happening. He's actually just doing the move to the stunt guy, which is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my god, and puts her hand over it like, yo, that's too hot. This woman made a lot of money. Oh yeah. <laughs> Huge thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. Have you ever considered how difficult it is to become a professional Hollywood stuntman? The level of commitment that's required in all of your life? Well, courtesy of today's sponsor Squarespace, that difficulty just got one step easier. It requires more than just being nimble and incredibly good looking. It requires an online presence. And with Squarespace's beautiful award-winning templates, that's exactly what you'll get. You see, Squarespace has everything you need to get your online presence up and running in 2023, including simultaneous posting, which allows you to post once on your Squarespace website and have that post simultaneously go out to all of your social media profiles. Squarespace also has video blocks and audio blocks, which allow you to post video and audio assets directly into your website. They also have best in the game analytics, which allow you to understand who's coming to your site, what pages they're viewing, and how to make your site better over time. Head on over to squarespace.com slash corridor crew to get 10% off a first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash corridor crew. And now let's get stunting. Yo, what is up? Happy Saturday. It's us on the couch and you know what that means. Another episode of Stuntman React. We got the true O to the G, Eric Linden with us on the couch today. And of course, Nico. Hi, also an OG. <laughs> <laughs> and we got some awesome clips. Let's just dig in, right? Yeah, let's just go right in. For the undisputed UFC middleweight title, first fighter to the scale, the challenger, Elwood Dalton. So I got to do the new Roadhouse movie. So I was in the Dominican Republic for like about three months, was doubling Jake Gyllenhaal, and I can't say a ton about it. I think I dropped maybe 15 pounds. Oof. Just got super lean to go out there and do this movie. And there was just a ton of water work. As you can see there, they're on the beach. So there was a lot of precision boat work and just having an entire crew all out on the water where you would have 10, 12 boats go 45 minutes out into the ocean and then you need to operate hair, makeup, camera, all this stuff on boats was logistical nightmare. It definitely made it, made it difficult, but hopefully it makes it awesome also. <laughs> Very different movie than the one that Swayze did. Problem? Here's no problem. I've actually never seen Roadhouse, believe it or not. Oh, really? How Whoa. dare you? <laughs> uh, awesome. That stiff leg. Awesome. Stiff leg so, hook kick. Yeah, you know, he does a spin kick to send the guy out the window, which is hilarious. But, you know, back in, you know, the 80s when you're watching this, that was amazing. Yep. But Swayze was like a real martial, martial artist. artist. He definitely trained it a lot and like kind of knew what he was doing. I mean, it's got that like nice brawl feel to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Good, good gag, you know, like right. uh, the floor wasn't padded. They're just like going for it. He got to wear some elbow pads. Yeah, you can see him. <laughs> boom, see Swayze, when you look at his punches, boom, bang, he looks good. I mean, I think that they just used the take of him kicking that looked bad, but he could kick. Yeah, it's just a distancing. Like, look at that, look at that. Boom, boom. across his face. <laughs> That punch right there, just completely missed. Yep. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> air. Need to hook that a little bit more. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, that <laughs> ass. Like if you have a hairy chest, like you definitely leave <laughs> that button. extra button. I wonder when these hairstyles are gonna come back in. I'm wondering when people are just gonna kind of start wearing the left earring again, you know? <laughs> it's happening. That used to be like the tough guy thing that yep. was, was like everybody had to have. He's so edgy. <laughs> oh, that was, oh good that, was a good, that was a good fall. There's a time in martial arts cinematic history where nobody kicked to the face 
ever. It wasn't a thing. Oh, and yeah. it was also a time where there were no kicks. Like kicks started happening like closer around the time of Bruce Lee. That's when kicks actually happened in film, cinematic kicking. And then when it came to America, it still stayed like very much so we're kicking at the chest and at the legs. We're not gonna kick at the head. And you see it in this film a lot. Learning how to kick for camera is a completely different art style than punching for camera. Also in terms of what was hot at the time in American cinema, that's not what people deemed as like, that was what you do. Like you punch, you throw people around, you hit them over the head with stuff. Yeah. It's usually these bar brawls. And then this is like one of the closest renditions we have to like seeing martial arts kicks. I mean, there were so many times like these action movies where somebody would like do a crescent kick and knock the gun out of the hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. The crescent kick was the disarming move. Watch this. Hi! <laughs> yes. And he just goes, you! And then jumps Jump back, back down. down. Back down. Let's go. Kicks him out of the way. Get out of my yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. That stuff from the 80s, that is just awesome. I hope they bring that back in the roadhouse. I have an NDA, so I'm not going to Damn. What an awesome stunt. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He is skying through the air, just going right to the dirt. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, no pads. Yeah, no shirt on. Just I mean, grease. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Baby like, oil and dirt. When he hits the ground, it doesn't even look like he, maybe they chopped up the dirt a little bit, but I mean, he just no, that hits the- stiff. Yeah, he yeah. hits it. That's the thing I really like about classic stunts is that it's not just a spectacle piece, it's a demonstration of like, yes, this is possible. Here's what it would actually look like if it were to happen. Like when Jackie Chan clears, you know, a big gap between two buildings, he's not on a wire because it's not magic. It's no, this is actually a possible outcome that you could use to escape. Yeah. The thing is great is that when you are doing something like that, practically, you can shoot it a little bit wider. You don't have to edit through it and kind of let the action play out. Guys like you in prison. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> what a manly thing to say. That'd be pretty intimidating in a fight, honestly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and somebody whispered that in your ear and be like, whoa! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, catch the leg. Oh. Ah, hold that. Kick him in the groin. Oh, no. Oh. Knee him in the face. Some of those stacks are really nice. Yeah, really good. You know, like Swayze doesn't need to swing his knee way past the guy's head. Like he brings it to a certain level and then the guy takes a reaction. And then the punch that comes right after that, boom, boom bam. Yeah. Nice sell, good timing. And look at him just rolling on him. Boom, boom, boom. And this guy just takes it too far. I don't want to kill you the old fashioned way. Crescent kick. Oh. <laughs> Ay -ya Boom. Ah. Oh, just pulling his throat. Ah, go take a swim. <laughs> Swayze was awesome. Patrick Swayze's a goat. <laughs> Gee, I've never heard that before. You know, I gotta say, there's something about this movie that, like, if you watch it and kind of ignore some of the hairstyles and some of the, like, the cheesy, like, moves that happen, it's a pretty darn good movie. And it wasn't cheesy then. No, it wasn't at all. It almost makes me want to watch a Steven Seagal fight from the 80s. Oh, no. Ooh. I have something in my pocket right now that'll completely clear up that bruise on your forehead. What bruise? Oh, oh quick punches. Steven Seagal is just hurting poor stuntmen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, like, these fight scenes are kind of cool. Oh, no. <laughs> no, some of what Steven Seagal did really well was no one had seen a lot of Aikido. Right. He was doing these moves that really hadn't necessarily been done on film before or not to this level. And some of the reason, as Guy said, that it does look pretty darn good is because he's actually just doing the move to the stunt guy, which is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's really locking their arms mm. and he's really like just throttling them when he puts them to the ground. And he's such a big dude too. He towers over everybody. So his power or, or whatever, not that I necessarily think these moves really would work on somebody. He knows how to do the move properly and obviously trains a lot. And so his power when he does throttle somebody is, is kind of not, not cool. He loves hitting people in the nuts too. Do you validate parking? Eric Linden is like... Dashing. A double rainbow. <laughs> the first double rainbow. If you're not subscribed, you might miss it when he shows up. So make sure you're subscribed.
Hey, did you guys do the react to Tommy Lee Jones and uh, Benicio the Del hunt? Toro no. knife fight? You haven't done that? Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Have you seen this movie? No. Oh, oh man. God, it, I didn't even know we're going to ruin existed. it again. I think something that they did that's interesting in this, which I want you to like kind of witness, is the way they fight. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. So good. What a move. I've never even thought about that as a technique. This is really good storytelling in a fight. Like, it's very much beat by beat. Here's what's happening. I mean, so brutal. Isn't there something about this? It's just like, you just like kind of feel it a little bit yeah. more. Mm -hmm. Super different. They are not relying on the one-shot kill where you just like stab somebody and the, and the fight's yeah, over. Right. And some of the stuff that's like really pausey where they have some sort of lock on each other, it's that they both know like if I let go, there's like certain death, right? Mm -hmm. And even the guy with the knife is like putting pressure in a certain thing, but he knows if he tries to move and re-stab that this guy could disarm him and then kill him. Oh, damn. Oh. There's another thing, like, this is a bit of a trend right now with knife fighting weapons in movies, which I don't see it here, which is nice, but it's like, if somebody does a swing with, like, a knife and you, like, you block it, right? I'm like, I'm gonna slice you. And they just leave their arm there now for this other person to do whatever they want yeah, with. Yeah, 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 like, then they go, oh, oh, you know? That's called cooperative choreography or cooperative screen fighting. There's also uncooperative screen fighting, which we see a lot in Donnie Yen stuff. So it's the idea of, I'm giving you my arm, so that way, now you can do what you need to do. Whereas usually it'll be, I block and now you have to take my arm. Yeah. And I'm not giving it back yeah. to me and then, then you can take it. That's interesting. I didn't know they had two names like that because I like seeing uncooperative fighting. Yeah. It's harder. It's more accurate to what the characters will be thinking. It's trickier to choreograph with, but the storytelling is richer for it in my opinion. Oh yeah. You know, too often like fight scenes are just like, all right, second, you can shoot that. It's the song and dance number between the story, you know? Whereas this is like, it's the final scene with the characters. Like it's getting the attention with the actors, the pacing, like it's the climax of your movie. It should be treated with more gravitas and like care and dedication than like any other scene in the film. Hey, come here. I know we're right in the middle of filming Stuntmen React, okay? But I just want to tell you that you could, at this very moment, be watching this episode on your smart TV. That's right, Apple TV, Android TV, Samsung, and Fire TV. And it's coming soon to Roku, LG, and older models of Samsung TVs. And as a Corridor Digital member, you'll also get 15% off all merch, exclusive shows, including click-by-click -click tutorials, our studio vlog, our D&D show, Son of a Dungeon, and extended React episodes. Look, my point is, there's never been a better time to give CorridorDigital.com a try. So head on over now, there's a link down below. You can get started for just $3.99 a month. Plus, there's a free trial. Okay, I should probably start paying attention again. Let's go. Today I'm being set on fire. Three, two, one. So you've coordinated and supervised and been in a lot of firework. Yeah, yes. yeah. We did this in another episode of Stuntman React, but this oh, yeah. is a fire stunt. No CG. It's and you bonkers. know your fire stuff. Yeah. This. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Oh. She puts her face right into it. <laughs> Oh my oh, god, and puts her hand over it like, yo, that's too hot. That's rad. That's crazy. And boom, smoked. I wonder what stunt woman did this. This woman made a lot of money. money. Oh yeah. <laughs> the hallway is literally boom, solid fire. Boom, yeah. <laughs> it's like, and she's bouncing off the walls. Like she's bouncing into some of them she, too. Yeah, like what she trips. And like, oh. so like what happens then? She certainly got hot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like whether she was burned or not. Especially I mean, right there. Yeah. Right like, there, that was bad. Yeah, she got smoked there. It looks like some of these charges are, are a little bit lower. The fire rolling off the front of the dress she runs forward it's just like oh, oh nice. god it's awesome another thing that helps out a ton she's got this dress on and see how it bubbles, bubbles out yeah i'm willing to bet her legs are pretty darn protected More yeah you can kind of see like on her fingers yep that her fingers have a glove on them which they did a great job of keeping the wardrobe, like the fire protective wardrobe, like skinny. You're still wearing three layers or whatever it might be, but they did a fantastic job of making sure that that 
fit her well. But you know, the fact that she's a Frankenstein, you can get a rubber mask that is made to look like yeah. this gnarly makeup job, and it's gonna play a lot better than trying to put on a mask that looks like me or whatever. Right. So a scene like this, there's like two things that really come out to me. One is, how do you put her out right away? She's covered with layers of fabric, right? I feel like it'd be very difficult to put her out right away. You know, so you're gonna have a lot of people on cans at the end of this hallway with CO2. You know, CO2 is sucking the oxygen out of the air and, you know, fire needs oxygen to go. So even though the fuel is still active, once there's no more oxygen, the fire is gonna be put out. And I'm assuming every one of those doors could probably pop open and somebody could come in and save her if she goes down early. That and was my other question. Yeah, what happens if she falls halfway through the yeah, I'm assuming there's a safety that could run in and get her if she needed to go down. And are they wearing full fireproof suits also? 100%. Yeah, because okay. they're, they're going to have to run right into that mess. It didn't occur to me that you'd probably have all the stunt people in full fireproof gear also. Like, in effectively, like, ways. firefighters. Well, she's know? running towards her safeties right now. Yeah. I, I'm assuming there's two safeties on either side of camera. Can you see when you're in this situation? You can see but it's usually pretty blurry. She definitely has like a Pyrex lens over top of her eye, but as you breathe yeah. in the gel also will fog up those lenses. So you're just seeing like kind of like shapes, which adds to the difficulty is all this light is behind her. Although it's like kind of like illuminating this direction, it's like you're kind of coming from the light source running into the dark. Mm. So I think that that probably makes it even more difficult to see what's happening. But clearly this is this is a one-way road. So they're like, just keep bouncing down the hall until you get somebody comes and puts you out. <laughs> you guys gave a lot of great references in the comment section that we pulled up today that we got to really enjoy. So keep that coming and drop that video drop that clip what is your favorite action sequence or action moment in a film or television show i feel like there's so much more that we need to go over but we we really knocked out a solid one this time so. <laughs> Hell yeah. damn thank Hell yeah. you eric all right well thank you for watching everybody we'll see you in the next one peace